This is Victor Broden, uh, Nashville Touring Session Guy at the Malloy Master Track Studios in Nashville, going through some of the MXR pedals that I am very much in love with and appreciative for. First thing here is the Bass DI, which I am extremely impressed with. Here's a highly professional little button chart in case buttons get moved between gigs or whatever. But um, what I love this thing, what I do is I run the distortion channel at all times. When I use it for a gig, I have this on like a preamp. And I have the distortion blend at zero. And even though it's at zero, it still gives me like an amp tone. So check this out, it's straight. That's straight. Here it is with, a, with my zero distortion, but still distortion on it. So that's kind of something I love. And uh, I do a lot of southern rock, you know, kind of more aggressive country, classic rockish stuff for work. So finger style, it's a great tone for that. So that's my favorite setting on this pedal. And uh, I don't really know how I got to that setting, but I completely love it. It's more like, Everything's at zero, and it just kind of does its thing. And, uh, of course, if you run just the EQ, I really like the EQ. I really like this mid knob, especially. Here we are going straight. Here it is with the EQ in. Same volume. So, this mid is so usable. That's something I really dig about this thing. It's very usable. I, I've yet to just, I would use this pedal on some, some other gig maybe as, if I was playing fretless, I would just go without this pedal on a normal bass. And then for fretless, I would, you know, kind of make a, this kind of a, to get more, more bite in the mid range. So you can use it as a two channel. I'm playing two basses on the same gig. You can use it like I do as a preamp on the whole time so that the DI signal isn't too clean. And the third use, of course, which is really fun, is this guy. Turn up the gain, which is the, imp the output level of the distortion, and add more of the distortion blend back in. And this is one of my absolute favorite things about several of these MXR pedals, is that the, the low end of the stray signal doesn't get contaminated by the effect. You still get a lot of tightness in the low end and all the distortion compared to other similar, bo similar boxes is up in the high end. So... It's all still punchy and low-endy, you know? Um, so, a lot of guys, if I was in a cooler band, like maybe like Audio Slave, I, I, I'd add a little, little water to that effect. thing so that's really usable for that so this one box really is is uh, does a lot of things and uh, everything from really mellow to really aggressive to the octave pedal a uh, lot of octave pedals have been out this one separate is separating itself because you got two knobs controlling the lower octave which is really usable because anyone that ever plays through a big PA knows that an octave pedal can make a sound man hate you for life as much as your bandmates love you because the amp sounds good and fat, the PA will sound good and useless and muddy. So the, uh, the girth here is the low part of the lower octave, and the growl here is kind of a punchier, slightly more mid-rangey part of it. So 
here we are with just the growl in. There we, there we are, we could take that out and we do a little bit of the girth instead. a lot cleaner but also a lot lower so when I'm playing here in the studio if I was playing on something that didn't have a lot of instruments stacked on it I would definitely use a lot of that low because it's really fat and clean but the minute you got to cut through stuff you got to use a growl and another thing that maybe that little example showed is that I play pretty hard and I get a lot of fret bus on purpose and I love the sound of a bass when it you dig in and you hear the fret and the wood and any other octave pedal I've had can track that. That little fret bus that's right here would trick the other pedals to not hear the real note. This one, however, doesn't have that problem. So, so let's go back. This is probably the most useful setting for me. I use a little more growl than I do of the girth. So if we're not upside down, you can see that setting, and uh, a lot of records kind of have been made with that sound. So, uh, from anything to, to kind of soloing stuff. That kind of a thing. From anything like that to uh, down low and down low there's once again you can try to make it not track and you won't do it playing hard and playing low there it is It kind of really shows how, how effective it is. And I've done a lot of gigs where I've uh, double synth bass and I've been down in this register a lot, like a G sharp. That kind of a thing. And no problem. And of course, here's the master invention, the mid, the mid button, which uh, really digs it out of the mud. Love it. It's it's so usable and it's not a bass bass player have fun pedal. It's a really really usable tool that I'll be using on a lot of gigs for a lot of things. And uh, just like the DI, it does anything from just a little octave to to that earth shattering thing to a really mid 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 rangey kind of a thing. And uh, it's perfect. I love it. Let's move on to the little uh, a little envelope filter. As you can see from my tape setting, this is also used by me on stage every night on a southern rock country gig. So that's how, that's how, uh, how much user friendly and, and real this pedal is. And um, once again, the problem I've had with other envelope filters are when you play soft, when you play that low end, normally gets overwhelming, especially through a PA, completely unusable. But on this pedal, the effect is kind of mellower and uh, and you don't get any kind of mud from it. It's 
kind of cool. It's, it's still, you can hear my attack, you can hear the string. It's still a real bass. It doesn't sound like a fantasy thing that doesn't work in a song. Again, that's my setting. That's how much I want of it. And, uh, but of course, it does a few different things. Like, for example, we can dial in more of the effect, the cue here, and um, make the decay a little longer, make the wow go a little longer, or shorter. Like, for example, uh, Also really usable. So let's change the decay completely and turn down the sensitivity so I have to really dig in to make it do it. different setting that takes a lot of obviously finger strength to, to get the effect out but all those settings are usable for a house guy he's not going to complain for the real bass tone going away so going back to my setting which is about right here you can see the dry signal is key through a PA or whatever so that you so Basically, the songs I used to know in our show is more kind of a Larry Graham thing, where I'm just doing this. And it's still, the bottom is real tight. You can still hear the punch. And it's the first envelope filter I've tried that kind of retains the punch, so. up when you kind of do that so really usable as well